These don't actually happen to have spaces in them, but if if the files did, uh, this is a good point to note and a good sticking point to just make sure everything's working well in your system. All right, so we're gonna let that extend out. We'll maybe make it like 240. And then we're going to collapse when hidden. And we're actually gonna show this we're going to say when the parent group's Wasabi file let's see, the full name, yeah, because it's going to have the file extension when it contains JPEG and when it contains PNG you could also add GIF here and you can do as you will, I would say continue to add all of the file extensions that you can possibly think of that would be used for maybe SVG, everything that you can think of that would be used for uh, a static image file added here because then when it's a static image, it'll play that. Now, next up, um, I'm gonna note the, we're gonna use this HTML5 video player because the HTML5 one will also play .mov files as well as, um, so as this one here. Uh, and believe me folks, I've tried all of the video players that are available and even purchased a few. Uh, to get the to bring to bring you this uh, knowledge that that's the one you want to use, and so let's see, two ninety six it looks like, and again two thirty ish for the video player. Collapse when hidden, and then we'll also want a conditional there. And I'm just going to copy conditional formatting, paste conditional formatting. And instead of JPG, we're going to say, and you know what, I would actually put these as dot, put the full file extension there as a recommendation, just in case any of the file names contain them, contain these. So this would be dot MOV. And I would also, I would, I would also advise, if you take a look at this, this is lowercase, this is lowercase. These have to match character by character. So I would also, if I was doing this uh, for real, for real, I would set it up and I would have the full name and I would say dot mp4 and I would literally do probably every version, every version that I could think of because uh, you know you just do it like mp4 so on and so forth uh, because then it's just the double, it's a, it's a fail safe for your file, file preview. So let's take a look now and see what we actually have. I'm going to delete these out of here. So we see that this bucket is empty. Now we're going to add these two. They might not show yet because I haven't really checked my workflows. Yep. Okay, I didn't think so. So actually, one of the other things we need to do here is we need to, alone actions, show whatever this is. Group uploaded content shell. And then, so that's when next is clicked. Okay, that's, that's an old one. Ah, uh, you know what? Actually, I missed one. What we wanna do here is we wanna say that when a file upload was successful, and we could also, we could also put, we could, we could move this progress bar into, so I'm gonna cut this here. I'm gonna paste this here. And I'm gonna insert an action I'm actually going to add a small pause here for two seconds, just so that you know when it's successful and it's processing and doing its stuff in the background, that that URL that we built, that there's actually going to be a file there. Um, and so maybe you know, uh, maybe it's at this point we'll say hide the progress bar as well. 
Okay, so let's give that a try. And it looks like, you know what, we could also have on here, there's a lot of different things we could do for this UI. We could have that when uh, this file count is equal zero, we can have it be hidden. Like this, uh, because over here in our workflow, you know, as as this, you know, if people added files, and then we're clicking off, now it hides the whole thing. So let's see. Let's go ahead and add three of these to this Z1 folder. Let's double check the Z1. Make sure it doesn't have anything in it. And then I'm going to click next. And it's going to go and it's going to upload all this stuff. And then remember, we added a workflow that when an upload is successful and it's running that workflow now, then display the stuff over here. And it looks like we've got to do some work here on this, this display. I think I'm going to make sure that these are inside of here. Let's double check our current cells, parent groups of Sabi file, when it contains PNG and JPEG. So we have PNG here. Let's try that again. Let's upload it to the second one. And we'll see if we uh, get what we came for. We'll see if we get a full on working upload system. We do not. So let's see if we can look for this video player. Ah, oh, okay, okay, okay. That's what it is. This should be or. And if you spotted that earlier, congratulations. Great one. Doesn't have to be all of those. It can be any of them. And then I'm going to note while this is going on in the background that this submit button, we have it do something here where it goes in and one of our data types for this, for an asset that has this, this is just the uh, naming nomenclature, but okay, great. So we can see that we have this stuff here and maybe one of the things of what's going on in this group, it's a row and we actually want it to be a column. Cool, cool. So we'll just run that one more time. We're on Z3, now we'll go to Z4. But basically, you'll want this URL that's here with all of the, the, the folder path and the file name that we can now, we can see here. And let's see, so that was Z4. All right, good, so that's public. Oh yeah, for this, maybe we wanna set up uh, set up some things. So maybe we wanna have it autoplay, autoplay muted, something like that. And maybe we'll wanna give at the bottom here, 20, 20. 
and for the purposes of this video and for the purposes of your testing you may if you're struggling to see stuff you may want to go here and just do a uh, public over override so just that all your stuff is showing uh, so that you can be certain that you get the preview you get the expected behavior with the preview that you expect to have meaning you actually see the stuff So we see our image and we do not see this file. So let's double check that. Oh, of course, we need to add a dynamic link. So basically just copy this, copy this exact same thing. So now we're on Z6 and it's always so normal to take a number of times to test what you have and get it all working together. Okay, cool. So we see this automatic preview here. We can name the file, we could discard it, and we could discard that. And then we could say file name. We could submit that. We have this nice UI and all these things working together there. So let's take a look at those workflows. So when this submit button is clicked, this Wasabi's, we're actually, so I'll rebuild this. What we're doing is we're going to that, uh, that state, this upload file holder, and then we're doing a minus operation. And we're, we're taking off this parent groups uh, state because it's already been submitted and guess what happens when we do the discard it's that exact same one and then it just scrolls up to the top so it's that same workflow uh, and then also though when it's submitted it scrolls up to the top and then for this uh, asset what we're doing or this whatever whatever data you decide in your world uh, just I've decided to have a list of files for this because this could have potentially multiple versions but you could also just have it have the be the thing, and uh, you could just say it equals to um, this URL. And so you're storing this URL, and then whenever you're using it in your application, it's coming from Wasabi and not from Bubble. And so that is how you do it. That's how you set up the Wasabi uh, external storage in Bubble. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, like or subscribe. It means a lot, and I'll see you in another video.